soon. And do you think that uh, the UFO ET presence or uh, alleged and reported presence on Earth has something to do with that? Yes. Yeah. That, that they were here to kind of prepare the way. Well, or it, it's, don't you think it's possible we are genetically engineered by them? That was just a f well, yeah. Almost cliche well, science okay, fiction thing yeah. now. But. I mean, if you believe in genetic engineering, then probably. Well, yeah, well probably I believe we it's are. a fact. Genetic engineering is a fact. Well, well, if that was the case, then we, in some sense, would be their children, wouldn't we? Yeah. Or, 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 or we could be both. They yeah. could be our descendants, and we could also be their children because it's time travel. We're talking about time travel. Well, that's a big part so, of, of what we're yeah, talking about yeah. here is, is that Stargates. creation could be a, a time loop. Yes. A, In fact, a, that is my theory. That that's is my Jack's theory. That's Jack's theory, which we share. We yeah. share that theory. And by the way, way, that theory of which mine... Which Jack probably invented before I... Oh, yeah. <laughs> before if I you look... Born. Okay, if you go on to uh, QED Corp, uh, QEDCorp.com, the APS directory, you will see a part of... The uh, 1973 meeting I had with Hal Putoff and Russell Targ and a bunch of people at Stanford Research Institute, in which I talk about the time loop theory back in 1973. But that oh, was really? oh yes, oh, wow. and wow. and that was yeah. before that was before all the discovery of dark energy and you know everything that's happened in the uh, since then has been confirming that initial idea. I was laying tin roofs in Idaho back in 1973. Uh -huh. Anyway, all right. I was I was out of the loop. Yes. Jack was in the loop. Oh yes. Now I'm trying to horn my way into the loop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, all that's discussed in my book, Destiny Matrix. All the details. Yeah, and this is about a destiny. Yes. The destiny. And it we is are, a matrix. Yes. It, it is a destiny matrix. matrix. We live and in a destiny, destiny matrix reality. And now it, it, you know, Jack and the physicists are comfortable with thinking there might be this Omega computer, but it would be maybe a billion years. Yeah, it could be many what? billion. No, no, okay. Well, here's the, there's a lot of confusion. Let me just say a few things about the physics. This holographic theory of the universe is now kind of mainstream physics, and, the, and it was created by Gerard de Hooft, who's a very anti-paranormal, but a Nobel Prize, very smart physicist, and a guy uh, named Leonard Susskind, who I was at Cornell with. We were both students together back in the uh, early 60s. Uh, and they talk about, you know, a hologram, there's a hologram plate, and you shine light through the hologram plate and you create a three-dimensional image. Well, that's an optical hologram, and what they're talking about is much more sophisticated. I can't go into all the details. It's kind of a metaphor, the holographic universe. But the point is, the, there's what's called the hologram screen, which is analogous to the hologram plate in an optical hologram. And, but the way they mm. talk about it, mm. it, they think it's in our past, billions of years in our past, because they believe in forward causation, that they believe in the past causes future effects. Retarded potentials. Retarded potentials. Yeah. But the thing is that uh, there's been a recent uh, PhD thesis by Tamara Davis in 2004 in Australia, the University of New South Wales, and she shows that the holographic screen has to be in our future, and it's tied in with the whole discovery of dark energy. Um, I don't, I discussed this on Coast to Coast, uh, February twenty first. Was that her? Was the, the dark energy connection? Was that hers or yours? That's mine. That's <laughs> okay. mine. Well, well, it's both. Okay, no wait, it's tricky. Everybody knows that this what's it's called the future cosmic horizon. Uh, the, it's connected with the Einstein cosmological constant, and and uh, and that is connected with the dark energy density. What they uh, what, what Tamara has not said is that there is a back from the future wheel of Feynman retrocausal effect. Advanced potential. Advanced potential, yeah, the advanced potential effect creating us from the future. And that's, she doesn't have the time loop idea, see. She doesn't get into it. She's just, she just, all she, yeah. all what, to, yeah. what Tamara did was to take the best data from precision cosmology in the last 10 years and just, according to Einstein's theory, very mainstream, plot out the history of a universe from the beginning, from the moment of inflation, heating up to the hot big bang, to the omega point. Uh, and I won't go into detail exactly what the omega point is. But she just did a, uh, a computer simulation, very accurate computer simulation. Oh, was it? A, oh, it's, oh, it's I a know. computer simulation. Oh, oh yes, yeah. and it's beautiful uh, pictures. I have it on. Based on it's based on the latest cosmological data, data. from Kobe and all, all that the other stuff. WMAP yeah. and right. Type WMAP. 1A supernovae, right. uh, all these things, and uh, and so uh, you know, one sees that the only thing that that fits the data. See, if you try to use 
what's called our past particle horizon, uh, you get numbers that are way too big. The only way you can get consistent with observation is that if the future horizon is what's causing the dark energy, not the past horizon. We live between two horizons. So past but that's horizon incredibly significant. Horizon. It's incredibly significant. Do other people do other people acknowledge the significance no, I, of that? Jack Sarfati, as far as I know, is the only guy who has pointed this out because it just boggles the minds of the mainstream guys. I don't know what. No, nobody's really? ever. Yeah, nobody's yeah. ever. Yeah. Then, uh, I spoke. Well, how, how okay, the only guy who's come close. Wait, the only that? guy who's come close is Bernard Carr. And oh. Bernard Carr was Stephen Hawking's uh, assistant in, uh, in Cambridge back in the 70s. And he's now a professor of astrophysics uh, at the University of London. And he does a lot of these Nova things. He's a well known guy in the multiverse. And Bernard is, also has an interest in the paranormal. See, he's one of us. And, and he. Was president like giant, like Brian Josephson, like does. Brian Josephson, no, another and, Nobel laureate, right? And and uh, Bernard in June of two thousand eight uh, published a paper, his part of his presidential address for the Society of Psychic Research in London, in which he does mention in a very kind of uh, short, brief way about Jack Sarfati's ideas that retrocausality is important for cosmology, but mm -hmm. he doesn't get into mm -hmm. it in detail. And also, mm -hmm. I didn't have it as much detail as when, when I spoke to him. Uh, I won't go into all history. So, but Bernard Carr is the only guy who is kind of the only kind of mainstream guy who has squarely faced this that it's from the future, not from the past. But, but now, how, how, why wouldn't we include uh, Frank Tipler? No, oh, well, in okay. this, all right, no, in but, this well, with his, his omega theory. Okay, his omega theory is very different. Frank Tipler's Fra Frank Tipler's omega theory uh, was done in the '80s, basically, when he wrote the uh, the book with. Uh, 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 yeah, you know, Barrow, John Barrow, yeah, yeah, who yeah. I think is at Oxford, oh, uh, the anthropic cosmological oh, principle. Yeah, right, yeah. And this was before... Oh, the, and that, that remind me that that's how you got me into, yeah, yes. into this before. That was before, Sophia, I read your book. Right, okay. About the, the beyond space and time. Yeah, well, yeah. Which well, we went into last night and we got totally carried away. Yes. Anyway. But, but here's the thing, though. Um, Tipler's cosmology is not correct. Tipler... Uh, was writing before the discovery of dark energy of the accelerating universe uh, back in uh, 1999. Oh, he so was into the big crunch. He was into the big crunch. Uh, and they do have a thing there, but it doesn't fit the data. Okay. Uh, and uh, and also, uh, Tipler never said that the action's coming from the future. He never talked about Wheel of Oh, Biden. he was not into teleology. No, kind no. Of well, not really. No, well, he, he wasn't. wasn't no, well, oh, no, he was, was again, he was quantum. never clear. He was never clear quantum. about it. Uh, uh, okay, he did yeah. talk about us being computed, I think, but uh, no, in his Physics of Immortality, he starts talking about that. Uh, but he uh, never, uh, as far as I can recall, he never emphasized that there were these back from the future. Uh, Effects. Jack, yeah. do you plan on writing a, a paper to follow up the other paper that you published a, a couple of years or a year ago? No, it's already no. I already have a paper on Mixer, in which I'm still modifying. It's in version five. Yeah, yes, and uh, I'll be talking about that. Uh, yeah, oh, absolutely. I mean, it's, yeah. It's, it's all on Star Drive. All the latest stuff is on Star Drive. Yeah, that's stardrive.org, folks. www.stardrive.org. Yeah. Well, of course, people watching this will be watching on Star Drive. <laughs> yeah, but who knows? Well, well knows. we right. hope it gets distributed. Yeah. Well, anyway, well, it'll be on YouTube. Anyway, so uh, let's go on uh, with what you were saying. Well, I mean, what chance then do we have of make having any impact on the um, yeah, we Kimasabi or whoever you Kimasabi on on the um, on the, the the scientific? Well, mentality. you know, this stuff is getting around because of the internet. It's getting around on YouTube, and it's also coast to coast radio. There'll be things happening. I'm I'm just interested in the idea of the fact that. You know, it, th things definitely seem to be converging to a to a, a crisis point uh, with regards to population and, and, and use of natural resources and oh, climate right. change. We went and, into that a lot last night. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, we're gonna let's get into that now because yeah. that's in, it's important. Yeah. And and in that, um, Stephen Hawking has this wonderful. He's been writing a number of articles lately about the the real the humanity's need to get off this planet, not just from a practical standpoint, but from um, a metaphysical kind of spiritual standpoint that we have this overriding need to explore and to expand. Yes. And uh, there and there's uh, pragmatic exactly. there's pragmatic reasons for us doing that as well. And I would seem to think I mean one would seem to think that 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 the disclosure and acknowledgement by the powers that be of the extraterrestrial presence on Earth would give 
us a new lease on life on this planet. It would, it would change.